Hey, Alec Null here, founder of Rose and Rogues. And today I want to talk about AI art and more specifically, give you a new way to think about what it means for artists. Stick around. Okay, so the internet's been going crazy over AI art, and I've had the privilege and opportunity to use it a fair bit. I've actually used it recently on a real client project. I needed to generate a number of concept images that would be hard to find as references. I was sending over a mood board, which is a collection of images to sort of give the feeling and idea of what we plan to make if we move forward with this client. Rather than spending a few hundred dollars hiring an artist to paint out these various concepts that I was going to send to the client, I simply went to the AI, told it what style I wanted it in, um, the types of images I was looking for, and it spat out a number of images. I refined that process a few times, changed my keywords, changed some of the style guides, and eventually got a lot of really good images that were close enough to what I was looking for. They're still very rough, eyeballs were in the wrong spots. Um, you know, uh, facial features weren't exactly how they should be. It wasn't anatomically correct, but it got over the mood and the feeling of what I wanted, which is the point of a mood board. And so it was good enough. It was a really cool experience to use on a real project, but it changed the way I thought about AI art. Right now, if you go to Twitter or someplace, there's kind of two common arguments for and against AI art. The argument against is that it's cheating, is that you're not making the art, the AI is making the art, and therefore you're not really an artist, you're simply a search engine person. It's more like, like putting in a search query into Google Images, finding an image with no copyright, and then just posting that image. And that's one way to look at it. The other common argument I see is AI is simply like Photoshop or the invention of the camera. So when the camera was invented, you know, painters got really mad at it. They were like, this isn't art, this is a machine generating an image that you just pointed to that something. You don't have to use paints. You don't have to select your paints. You don't have to mix them. You don't have to have understanding of anatomy or any sort of complex artistry. You just point and click. 200 years later, uh, we have way more cameras than we have portrait artists. So in one sense, you know, their prediction came true. It replaced portrait artists for the most part. You can still go and get your portrait painted, but it's way more expensive than just taking a photo on your cell phone. That being said though, I wouldn't say that photography isn't an art, right? We have Ansel Adams as well as many, many, many other super famous photographers who do amazing art with their photography. When it comes to AI, which is it? Is it a Google image search algorithm that you're simply taking advantage of? Or is it a new tool in the hands of artists like a camera? I think we should stop thinking about this as a binary. Now I totally get why we've resorted to everything being a binary. There is way too much information right now to handle. And so because of that, we respond to it by breaking it down to its simplest form, good or bad, on or off, A or B, and that makes it a binary. And this is what you see in politics. Everything has to be completely one side or the other. And then when you make an argument from a side, it has to be the most extremist argument or someone's gonna take it as the most extremist argument. And I feel the same way about this AI art thing, this idea of, you know, you're either completely not an artist if you use it, or it's completely valid and just as good as any other art. I think a better analogy, a better example than the Photoshop or camera example is that you are a patron, that you are contracting the AI to make art for you, removing you from the role of artist and putting you in the role of director. Now, this makes way more sense if you think about it a little bit longer, as opposed to a camera or Photoshop even, where you know it makes the job of capturing an image faster or easier, but I still have to manually push the buttons, I still have to point the camera, I still have to X, Y, and Z. Instead, I'm just giving it prompts. The same way if I were to hire an artist. I am no longer hands-on with the camera, I no longer have control over what colors, what tools, um, how the paint is put on the canvas, or where it's put. Instead, I am simply directing or ordering how this is gonna be done, but ultimately it's up to the artist to actually do the manual work. And that's the difference. Um, the AI takes the place of the artist and not the place of the tool. And that's the mistake of comparing it to a tool. And in that sense, I don't think you're an artist anymore if you use AI and simply take that art as is and post it. There are artists using AI, and these are people that are generating multiple images from the AI, taking those images and, you know, comping them together. I would consider that transformative, and I would consider that now art again. 
just like if you were to hire multiple artists to draw various uh, characters and then assemble them in a scene, you'd still be an artist assembling them. There's an artistry to doing that. I think the same way with um, like a 3D artist, if you're taking assets from multiple people, multiple places and putting them all in together into a scene and lighting it and directing it. But notice there's a point at which you're in the tool pointing the camera, which is what makes you an artist and not a director. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a director. I think being an art director is great. I'm often in a director role. Obviously, directing is a form of art. So you could say, you know, directors are artists. But what I mean by this is if I went to a client and I said, hey, I need to hire an artist to do this work, they wouldn't assume I'm hiring a director. They would assume I'm hiring a photographer, you know, a cinematographer, a model, or so on and so forth. So that's what I mean by, by artist in that sense. But this analogy works a lot better. You're comparing telling someone what to do versus telling a machine what to do. You don't really have control over the output, and what you're given is not an editable file, but you're given a deliverable. There are ways, obviously, of manipulating the art, and I think there are ways of painting over the art, and so on and so forth. But I think changing this idea saves a lot of the argument where the people defending it saying, yeah, it's totally valid. It's an image that was created and I directed. Yeah, you're right. But the, the artists saying, well, you're not the same as a concept artist going through and hand painting each scene are also correct. You're not the same as the artist. You're not doing the same work. It's totally different work, but it's not invalid work. So I think if you were to go forward with this sort of concept, and thinking about AI in this way will really help the conversation move along. I'm really curious to know what you think about this idea. Do you think I am correct and that this is more accurate or that I am just following yet another uh, rabbit trail and I'm completely wrong about this whole AI thing? I also want to know how you feel about AI art. Do you think it's a useful tool for directors and for democratizing concept art? for people that couldn't normally afford it or do it, let's say, if they couldn't afford it before, they're not skilled enough to do it. Now they can now get awesome concepts very quickly. Or do you think it's a travesty? It all looks the same and awful and trippy and uh, will never replace a good old fashioned paintbrush. Either way, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.